There are many ways you can create games. Today I'm going to show you something that is not super popular, but extremely cool. Uh, so today's tool is an AI tool that will help you make games at the speed of thought. Uh, you basically use text prompts and it generates live on the spot. So it's like different than using a traditional large language model because this one's going to show you what it's doing as it builds it. So this one's called rosebud.ai. It is completely free and not super popular, which is interesting because it's such a cool tool. So I'll scroll down. I'm gonna show you some of the stuff it can do. Uh, you know, you can build worlds, animate with ease, so on and so forth. And this thing will create all the assets for you and it is really cool. So along the top is quick start templates and we have all these different templates we can start with. Uh, you know, maybe we wanna do a world, word cloud or a flashcard template or, you know, a crossword. Um, but you can also scroll down, you can see all the stuff that other people have made. Uh, so maybe we wanna play this Dodger Roger and it tells you who it's by. If we scroll down, we can see there's a description. It says click, click the arrow keys to move and dodge enemies. So uh, we're gonna go normal and we're just basically gonna dodge enemies now, which I'm this orange box and I'm just dodging enemies. And then there's a new wave coming. I'm gonna hit the box just so I can die. Uh, and we can see this game here. Uh, I'll play a couple more for you and then I'll show you the really cool stuff that you can do. So, uh, Match games are always kind of fun. So, uh, how does this work? There you go. So this simple match three game. All right, so simple enough, right? Um, I don't know what I matched there. Can, is it broken? Uh, okay, so you can move pieces anywhere even if they don't match, but nonetheless, a match three game. Um, not like, the craziest lighting engine version 2. Uh, oh, I see. This guy's moving. And he's just moving through the map. What, what am I supposed to do? This is my lighting engine. It's taken me over a month to get to the stage. So it's just like different lights and paths and stuff like that. So it's all really neat. Um, but if you notice, there's this little play button beside each one. And that's how many times it's been played. And like I said, it's not super popular because the most, it's like 3.2 thousand which is not a lot but the remix is the cool part so you can actually clone this and you can remix your own project so let's try uh let's try to remix a project and then we'll see i'll show you what it can do and then we'll actually try to build one ourselves and then i'll show you one that i spent some time building going back and forth with so uh we have this pac-man game here so we can use the arrow keys to move Miss Pac-Man. We're going to hit start game. All right, so there's our Miss Pac-Man game, which is cool, um, but we're going to remix it. All right, so we get this little menu here. On the left, we can type in our prompt and we're going to use just natural language and we can clear our memory if it gets too much, if we have too much text. We have assets we can generate and we have code. So you can actually view the code and edit the code yourself, which you don't need to do. And then we have assets and then we have our Miss Pac-Man game. So let's try to change Miss Pac-Man, this person here, into a, uh, a different person. So let's come here, we're going to cartoon style. Subscribe button person work. Uh, so make sure you guys are subscribed if you want more AI content. This is going to work. So we're going to use him. He has subscribe in his face. Please use on the scene and replace the Pac-Man with this asset. So um, we can go back to preview. And sure, it's going to help us. And here it's telling us the code that it's uh, changing, removing, and updating. Uh, if you are a programmer, you'll... This will look very familiar to you. It's basically sending a uh, get, uh, pull, and push. Um, so it is really neat. It's telling you what lines it's doing, and we're gonna have to wait a second. It's just working, and these changes, we're gonna replace it with the person, and we can hit apply, and then we can click to run our changes. And now when we start our game, 
So it's interesting. It says error caught in game code, uh, unable to read. So we can hit fix it, and it realized that there's an error automatically, and it, it is fixing its own error. Uh, so it's saying, hey, here's what the problem might be. We're going to pinpoint the issue. Uh, they're going to try to come up with a strategy to fix it. Um, at what point does the error occur? So it occurs at the start of the game and only happened when we change the asset. Okay, so it's working with us and like literally zero programming, we're going to change the asset of our character and it should fix. And now it's making sure that the reference to the player is correct throughout our code. We're going to hit apply, we're going to run our changes and hit start. All right, so there's our new character and it is uh, fully functional and working. So just real quick, we were able to adjust or uh, character accordingly. And you can do the same thing. You can start with one of these templates and you can go back and forth. You can make all your assets and you can create full-fledged games. I can blank project uh, just because I want to show you that, uh, you know, we're starting from absolutely nothing and you can make some pretty cool stuff. Create a 2D side scrolling game like Super Mario, but with blocks. And we put in our prompt here, and it's pretty simple. And it says, sure, I'd be happy to discuss this uh, 2D side-scrolling game inspired by Super Mario with blocks. Sounds like a good project. So it says, are these blocks obstacles? Yes. So we have to answer these questions, and then it will uh, take our answers and build our game. So the first one is like, are they obstacles? Yes. Make them obstacles. Uh, would you like a player character that can jump and move side to side? Yes. We want it to do those. We'll pit three. Are you thinking about cloning enemies? No enemies for now. And no power-ups. And uh, five. Just one level. So just one level. So basically just asking how many levels we want. Do we want to have power-ups? And it's just basically saying, hey, where are we starting? Um, and now, as you can see, it is starting to build our, uh, our game. And to start, it's not going to be that good. Let's well, just try to give you realistic expectations. And I mean, it might be good. But generally speaking, you're going to have to prompt it back and forth. Uh, but what I like about this versus a regular... Um, uh, large language models, I can hit apply and then I can hit run changes and here it is. So I can move left and right with my arrow keys and I can't jump, but I mean, we have a starting point at least and you can see we've just created this little block here. Um, uh, let's go here, let's make it a cartoon style, let's hit penguin and our penguin is going to be our main block and then we can hit this little plus for insert and then we hit enter and it's going to add our penguin into the scene which should be our block um, I think if we went back and forth and really went into detail we could probably fix the whole jumping thing how you want to use the penguin in your game uh, it should be the main character yeah, it's just a matter of being like really specific using proper English. Um, and it does take some time, but again, we're not really doing any coding. I mean, I could click code and then probably figure it out and modify it myself. Uh, but that's not the purpose of today's demo. So we'll hit apply. We're going to hit apply to run changes. And uh, I don't know what happened. Should make the main penguin of your thing. It's not. I still see the block, not the penguin. Please fix. <laughs> um, 
I'm going to keep this all in here because this is just like part of the experience of just going back and forth and getting it to work. Uh, after this prompt here, I'm going to jump to actually something that I spent quite a bit of time on uh, to get to work. And that way I can show you like what you can actually accomplish with enough patience and uh, information. Um, I mean, is that a penguin? It's a little small to see. Uh, anyway, um, let me let me show you one that I actually created myself, and then we're gonna go to games. You can see this 3D first-person shooter created from a blank project. This took a while to make. Um, so it's a little bit glitchy from at times, but you can see there is an enemy, and I go around, and I go, uh, you know, I can click the space bar, and I can uh, hit them and I am losing 14 to 15 right now. And this was created literally with just the prompts. All the assets were created with it. Uh, everything is 100% created with what I showed you prior, just a lot more patience and more detailed uh, information. Uh, this map is uh, supposed to be like a really low scale shipment type map, but uh, nonetheless, it is a pretty cool tool. This whole Rosebud AI uh, is a cool tool, and if you guys enjoyed this video, definitely check it out because uh, it doesn't have that many people using it, and it's kind of fun. Uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video and leave a comment on what your thoughts are. Have you used this before? Will you use it? Uh, I want to try making a game with uh, probably the updated Claude because it's phenomenal. Uh, I'll do that in the near-ish future. And if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more AI content. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.